Kiwi Craze, or the New Zealand story as it's known in 95% of the world, is a quirky little action game on NES that I remember renting a lot back in the days. When I started collecting games again, I could never remember what the hell it was called, until I watched another video showing it, and of course I then popped up in my chair and screamed, HOLY CRAP, THAT'S THE GAME! Okay, so I didn't really do that, but most of that story is true. In Kiwi Craze, you play as a Kiwi. I know, shocker. You have to fight to get back all of your Kiwi friends, done by shooting an unlimited supply of arrows at your enemies and getting to the end of each maze-like level. So far, sounds like a typical game of the era, correct? Well, before I move on to the things that you didn't see often in these kinds of the games, I want to talk about Kiwi's controls. He walks a bit slowly, but it works well for the game. When jumping, he can also flap his wings to get a bit of extra distance. The only thing to keep in mind is that when he jumps, he seems to slow down a bit, so he won't get as much distance as you'd expect. You do get used to it quick enough though. So as I said, there's a few interesting development ideas put into place that make the game stand out a bit. For one, again, the levels are mazes, and fairly large ones at that. You can press start to bring up a mini map to see where you're at and where the exit is, but other than that, you just need to explore a bit to figure out where the end of the stage is. Some levels are a bit more linear than others, and at times there are a few optional pathways that you can engage in, so there's some choice involved in the game. Of course, there just so happens to be a timer that forces you to at least minimize your exploring though. If the timer starts to expire, you'll get a hurry up message, and a special enemy will start giving chase, which cannot be defeated. I didn't record it on this playthrough, but this is one of the few things I remember as a kid. Nothing gets your ass in gear like seeing something chasing after you because you've been lounging around a bit. Another feature that you didn't see in most games was the ability to ride airborne vehicles. Many of your enemies will spawn in riding one and you can either strike them with one of your weapons to make them abandon it, or you can simply pull a Mario and jump on it, pushing them off this way. The third option would be to shoot the vehicle itself, but then it pops and just dumps the enemy to the ground to their death. There's a lot of areas that require the Kiwi to ride one of these contraptions, so it's a good thing most enemies will respawn infinitely. So you might be asking, if you can just jump on your enemies to steal their ride, don't they hurt you? Well, the answer to that is... it depends. Some enemies will kill you if you touch their bodies. However, most of them will only do damage if their projectile touched you. So yes, most enemies are safe to touch, but don't be near them if they're shooting things at you. By playing the game, you'll start to learn which enemies you can safely touch, and which you can't. You want to learn this quickly, because the game is not easy by any means. At least, I never thought so. Maybe it's just because I sucked at the game. Maybe it's because there are a very limited amount of lives, with even more rare extra lives. Maybe it's the constant respawning enemies. Maybe it's because there's only three continues but it's probably mostly because I sucked. But then again, there are a lot of cheap deaths. Enemies may spawn in an area where you may leap to touch them, but instead hit a small bit of spikes. The airborne vehicles can pop when striking a sharp object, and sometimes you're forced to dismount a blimp close to spikes, so you need to be very careful on the pixel-perfect placement of your craft. And the enemies don't seem to have any set spawn patterns, so it's also possible for one to appear in front of you, just in time for a quick death. And another unusual decision for his time was to give Kiwi an air meter while swimming. He dons scuba gear and the gauge will appear on the bottom left of the screen. But hitting air pockets or simply emerging from the water, Kiwi will regain his oxygen, but it's definitely not something you saw a lot back in the era. Well, I haven't even started talking about the weapons yet, but then again, there aren't a ton of them. You have his standard arrows, but he can also get bombs with minimal range but a downward throw. There's also a laser beam that I think goes through the enemies instead of stopping like the arrows do. There are other power-ups too, like the one to destroy everything on the screen, stop the enemies in their tracks, or make Kiwi invincible, but these are also rare. There are bosses at the end of each area to defeat. Each one isn't so bad in its challenge factor, but they may take a few attempts to figure out where it is best to place Kiwi to minimize danger. The first one is the one most remember, as it's a whale that freaking eats you. You then need to obliterate its insides. It's really cool. The music of the game is fantastic and will get in your head. It's just a shame that there are so few tracks. We have the title track, the main stage theme, the boss theme, and the song that plays once time is running out. That's it. Even the final boss, when I checked out a video, didn't have anything special. At least what there is, is fantastic though. The graphics of the game are also very well done. 
Everything is bright and colorful. Sadly, the waterfalls of the game lack animation, but it still looks pleasant enough. The only catch is that there seems to be a lot of yellows involved in the game's visuals. Not a huge knock against the game, but a larger color scheme would probably have been nice. Unless New Zealand just looks yellow in general. Then I guess it's okay. Kiwi Craze, or New Zealand Story if that's what it's called in your neighborhood, is a fantastic port from an arcade game to the NES system. It's got an addicting story that starts off fair, but then starts getting challenging quickly. Sadly, I can't even get past the third area, but it's a game I keep playing now and again because it's just plain fun. If you're into arcade ports, this one is a must play, although I'm really happy I didn't find this in our arcades because I'd probably be out of a lot of quarters. Final score? 9 out of 10. This is Reaper. Happy fragging.